there. I'm Deb Palm, and we're here now today at the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. And I'm excited because Megan is here with us. She's going to help us understand where we're at and what's going on and what this is all about and why do people come here. Well, people come because they're either fans of the rodeo or they don't know anything about rodeo, so we get both. We do have a very good video that goes through the history of rodeo, so people get an overview of what's going on. Plus, all the people that are fans of the rodeo get to see their heroes' stuff. Well, here at the beginning, I see this great big life post of front page, I guess it would be. Who is that? That is Casey Tibbs, and Casey Tibbs was big in the 1940s and 50s. He became the first cowboy to be known outside of the rodeo circles. Okay. So he became a national figure. Okay, now, Chris Ledoux. Ledoux. Who is he? Chris Ledoux rode horses, so he was a bareback and a saddle bronc rider in the 70s. He became pretty big. He actually won the championship in 1976 for a okay. bareback. After he retired from rodeo, he became a country music singer. That's Most so people funny. know him as the singer. Some of the artwork in here he actually created. Everybody tends to love it because everybody loves Chris Ledoux. Here we are at something that I know. <laughs> you know, um, as a kid, Wilbur, used to actually come, he would be the rodeo clown at Frontier Days. And my mother had him to dinner, I think at least twice that I can remember. Yeah. And um, I will say he was very handsome without his makeup on. <laughs> but I always admired, I knew him when I was really small, yes. so I always admired the fact. You know, cowboys have a lot of guts, they're not afraid. But these guys run into the burning. Yes. They're running in to save the they cowboy. Do. I mean, it's like a yep. firefighter moment. I mean, they're yes. running into the burning building. Yes, and a lot of our signs for this section here are a little outdated because they say clown. Most of the um, they're called something they, else now, don't yes, they? they prefer to be called bullfighters because it, it just emphasizes how much work they actually do. And you know, they, it's true they entertain, but yet they're very important to saving cowboys. All around champion. Right. This is my next moment. Okay, started way back in the 30s, right? Now the all-around cowboy, he Tom has Ferguson. to win over $3,000 in more than three categories. Three events, so calf roping, steer wrestling. Um, or, and you could ride bull too, riding. or you can team rope. A lot of our statues and stuff were commissioned either by, um, we have a couple Remington statues, some Ed Honan, and some Ed Hayes. Okay. Ed Hayes designed the statue that's out front. It's called The Champ. It's actually Casey Tibbs on necktie. This is the Ed Honan Gallery. He did all of these bronzes here for okay. us. And these are old postcards that we've blown up. Double Day, he was a very big photographer in the 30s. Right. 20s and 30s, actually. And these are mostly his postcards. He took pictures of everybody, and he has some great ones. Oh, oh my goodness. But okay. I love their hats. I was going to say, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Look at their hats. We're talking more than 10 gallons. Oh, yes. And we're talking the women. Yes. Okay, that's, that's, that's a hoot, actually. But then as you look at the old pictures, the cowboy hats have definitely evolved. Oh, yes. They're not like Fashion they used to be. Fashion has basically changed, and the ladies weren't opposed to fighting each other either, so yeah. there's some pulling hair and everything in these pictures. A pink shoot. This was for the tough enough to wear pink at the end Okay, bar. I was going to say, breast cancer. Yes. Right? Okay. But they've been tough enough to wear pink for a really a long, really time. long time. Yeah. They have. Now, in the wall in front of us are all these amazing belt buckles. Yes. If you're not a rodeo person, you don't know what a belt buckle really means. <laughs> so why don't you tell them how important it is to get one of those? <gasps> Belt buckles are basically the trophies of rodeo. This buckle display is um, NFR buckles. So these are the championship buckles that they win. I think we have some from the 30s, so Boston Square Gardens all the way up through Las Vegas, and they just get bigger as the years go on. Amazing. And fancier. And these people over here are our current world champions. They won in 2012. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at all of them. So this would be for every event? For every event. She's okay. a, the barrel racer. Okay. Yeah, and her story is actually pretty neat, too. She was injured and came back to barrel racing this year and then ended up winning. 
Okay, so we're coming into what room? This is Heritage Hall. Okay. And this is our American Cowboy Museum part. Okay, the, oh my. And these gates here that you see are from front, Frontier Day Cheyenne. Okay. Of course, my place, so that, I like <laughs> that. And over along this wall, we have pictures from um, the Boston Gardens and the old world championships from the um, 30s, 40s, 50s. And then along here, too, are some of the old arm patches that they wore. Now, ropes. Yes, and you wouldn't think there's a lot of technology in rope, but actually, it has come quite a ways. Now it looks like we're getting to steer wrestling. Mm -hmm. That used to be called bulldogging. See, that's and according to some of the little pictures, they used to do it from cars, it looks like. <laughs> Instead of horses. Which seems a little like cheating. Oh my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> and look at that hat. I mean, it is too <laughs> Oh, and In fact, we that have some of those right hats. into the hat. <laughs> look at this. Oh my. So, um, Okay, that kind of looks like one that I would know somebody would wear. Right. The rest of them? These are the older ones, so we start in the 1850s to 1900s, and it kind of goes through the, the oh evolution of what they look like. The ones there towards the end kind of look like what you'd see now yeah. that Stetson and Rosas all make. And there, here we have the evolution of chaps. Um, they started out kind of fuzzy and furry, and then they moved into more of the leather and the fanciness that they have. Yeah, they got to the point where they now have all sorts of different leather patterns on them and things like that. That's what I've, I've, I've seen. And they're really easy to push. Oh, that's so good. It's not a hard door. Sometimes I've had to like shove them like out. Yeah. Oh my goodness, look at these. Wow, well, gorgeous. Now you have, um, that's where your stock is? Uh, this is actually a working arena. Okay. And we do have, we are connected with the PRCA. We do have a few members that will bring in um, animals that they're working with. Okay. And they'll bring them in and we have a barn that they stay in during the day and they'll come out and work with them on their lunch time and take them home at the end of the week. Oh my, and you said that you rent this facility out about every weekend? We try. <laughs> so we're coming up on our pavilion and this is was donated by Hella Trell and okay. dedicated to him. He was. I believe he was a stock contractor and he did some judging too. And basically it's a rental space. It's completely open inside. Uh -huh. um, it holds about 150 to people and that's seated. So if you wanted to have people stand up and have a dance floor, you could have a few more people in there. Right. Plus these glass doors actually open and you can have it look out onto the, to the gardens. Let's go. You know, and if you didn't know about this place, um, you should. If you're going to have any type of an event, um, this is the place to come. Wow, and it's so Colorado. Yes, it is very Colorado.